The land on the other side of this hedge is managed by the League of School Sports and has been so managed for 20 or 30 years. But they didn't stock it with anything because they think the deer like it. But the trouble is that the deer actually, they don't really like the grass out there, which is, it's not looked after. It's not grazed tight enough to so there's fresh grazing. Whereas we farm this in a normal way, graze it off with sheep and then let it come up a bit and then graze it off again or mow it for hay or whatever you do, farmers do. Well, it, it looks rougher, doesn't it? It doesn't look quite like this where the bracket is. And the deer know what they like best. They like the digestible short grass that we produce. So we've got a selection of deer next to us, which spend most of their time on our land. If, we, if they want to keep deer on the league land, that's fine. But why don't they keep them there? But they don't, because they come to our land. So it's quite irritating. Well, they don't do anything, but the deer live there. No, no other stock is put there, so the weed isn't cut and the grass gets longer and longer in the summer and the deer don't like that sort of grass. In the spring they probably like it, but they'd much rather come on our land here where there's nice young short grass about that long where we've just seen it's covered in sheep and whatever. Tom has brought me, environmental journalist Charlie Pysmith and former head of the League Against Cruel Sports and now animal welfare consultant Jim Barrington up here to look at the problem. Charlie and Jim are embarking on a year-long project to meet and interview people affected by Tony Blair's hunting ban, which is now 17 years old. The main thing it's about is about the Hunting Act of 2004. Has it actually had any effect? Has it done what it was supposed to do, which is to improve animal welfare? Nobody's done any research on this. The anecdotal evidence suggests that actually things may be much worse for the fox and the deer, the main two hunted species, than they were before hunting was banned. I hope we can bring some science in, but uh, uh, you know we, we shouldn't belittle the experiences of people who are, if you like, at the coal face, the people who are experiencing what's happening to the fox, what's happening to the deer, what's happened to the, to the hare. Uh, so I, th I think that's, that's just as valid in many ways. The point is, of course, uh, the anti-hunting people haven't done anything like this. So one would thought that if they thought their act was so, so good, they would have done something and they haven't done anything like that at all. The act that, that, that was put through is entirely their product. No, there's no alteration or blocking or anything like that, which sometimes they use as an excuse for that, that law. Uh, it is entirely their product. And now they're saying it doesn't work. It, they, they held it as a great piece of work to begin with. Now it's flawed, it needs to be tightened up. Well, when you're in a hole, stop digging, that's what I would say. I, th I think the way in which science has been used or misused is, is, is crucial to the whole argument. That the antis were saying we've got scientific evidence that hunting prejudices the welfare of the hunted species. Well, actually, the science that was used in the debates before the Act came into, into, into force in, in 2005 was absolutely appalling. And it's been totally discredited. I mean, the main witness, I won't say his name for libel reasons, but he trumped up the evidence. And so I think it's very important. I think the other thing which relates to this is so much now is governed by sentimentality rather than hard evidence. And we see that now with the, with the, the new... Um, act that's going to come in to ban the importation of trophies from hunting in Africa and places like that. It's all to do with sentiment. Nothing has been done to show actually this is good for the welfare of the animal. Tom is one of the people that Tony Blair tried to cancel. Well the deer here um, are an interesting uh, example of what has happened on Exmoor a bit after the Hunting Act because there's a herd of about between 80 and 100 here and they're here all the time. Uh, if, if the hunts were able to operate like they're used to here, they would break up those herds of deer and move some of them off to different places. What about the actual welfare of the deer from the deer's point of view? Has that suffered because of the act or not? All over Exmoor, a pack of hounds hunting deer would find the, the sick or the wounded or the TB deer because dogs hunting a wild mammal like that naturally seem to manage to single out the ones that are compromised. Just like wolves do. Like wolves do. Um, and so a pack of hounds, um, which they used to use when they were hunting on, on, on Exmoor, would find the sick ones, whereas two, they're now only allowed to trail hunt or hunt with, uh, for research with two hounds only. So two hounds aren't going to find these any sick deer. They see, don't seem to. So in terms of the casualty deer, I mean, I gather from conversations we've had before that that's one of the roles of the hunt is to find the deer that are sick or wounded. 
Are you actually finding less now because oh, you can't? Many less, yes. It's natural, really, because two hounds going into wood like they are below us, with um, if there are deer there, two hounds um, are not going to spread out at all in the wood and find other deer. They're just going to go on a line, possibly after the one they're actually hunting. So um, sick deer that aren't found, aren't seen by anybody, aren't going to be found. And it happened quite often. People ring up the hunt say that we've got a, a lame hind or something, and they take two and they can't find it. It's, a, it's, it's natural, you haven't got, if you want, you want more dogs to deal with that sort of thing. Did, did anyone who was promoting the Hunting Act, did, the, did they come down here and talk to you about all these, these subtle differences and changes that would be brought about? Did, did you have a chance to explain what, what could happen? No, um, they wouldn't, would they? they, they their view was only that, that hunters are, are cruel and people chasing deer are cruel and anybody else isn't cruel. So they, they think it's a, they think it's a, a, a it's a fait accompli really. They, no, nobody ever asked me, well, they wouldn't. I don't think we're ever likely to, quite honestly. That's what Jim and Charlie are out to find with their project. Things that Tony Blair and the anti-hunting MPs hadn't thought through. I will be joining Jim and Charlie on their tour throughout the year as they meet more people like Tom and you will be able to see their stories unfold on Field Sports Britain.